Now, does Britannia still rule the waves or are we sinking under them? Well, the latest report from the National Audit Office found that the Royal Navy is being forced to cannibalise its own ships, submarines and helicopters for spare parts. The practice is officially considered a last resort, but engineers had to strip parts from other equipment nearly 800 times last year. Well, I'm joined now by Lord West. He's former first sea lord and commander-in-chief of the Royal Navy. I mean, this is a fairly long-established practice, isn't it? Why are we getting worked up about yes, it? Yes, it is. I mean, we, we've, we've done cannibalisation. We used to call it store robbing. Store robbing. Um, for many, many years. Um, I think what's very worrying in this report is in the last five years it's doubled. Um, the government will say, oh, it's still only a tiny bit. But not only is it doubled, they're taking equipments not just from ships that are lying in reserve, and we don't have reserve ships, they're ships that should be used operationally, but also from ships in build. And I find that very worrying, and I'll be very interested, they've, they've said how expensive this is, because if a ship's building, or a submarine's building, and you take a critical bit of equipment from it, the shipyard generally, the people who are building it, will say, well, hang on, you've now delayed its building, and instead of charging you whatever it is, you know, £100,000 for this widget, They'll say that's delayed the building of this thing by three months. That's 200 million, please. So that's where um, the extra cost comes in, potentially. And that's where potentially that cost comes in. And the other thing is, we now have very few ships. There is no doubt that the military is being hollowed out, the navy is being hollowed out, and, and it's very, very worrying. I don't think people in Britain realise that it's moving towards a state where the navy can't do what I think most British people expect of it. And when you've got fewer and fewer ships, if you store rob from another one, if, 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 if things suddenly happen, you need them, you haven't got them. Mind you, that's true of other countries as well. I mean, I was reading the other day the German Navy doesn't have any U-boats at the moment. Uh, yeah, one could say, thank goodness for that. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but, I mean, the, um, the, the, you know, the, 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 that's not the point. You know, we are, we are one of the great maritime nations. We rely on the sea. Um, global shipping is run from, U from London. Um, it's quite interesting when the tanker war happened in the Gulf, huge Taiwanese shipping companies and put all their flags, flagged all their ships in the Red Ensign because the Navy could look after it. That is no longer the case and that is a real worry. Uh, and I think this is just another indicator of the hollowing out um, and I'm very glad the NAO report has highlighted it. And it's all very well saying it's a small percentage. Yes, yeah, half of a percent of all parts are panicked. But they can be Navy. quite critical and uh, we've touched on one of the items of cost. The other thing is I, I know for years we've done it because we've not been good at identifying which spares you're going to keep having to replace. But now I think, with, I mean, this, we used to do this with quill pens and weren't good at <laughs> Now you can do it with computers and with, with the sort of algorithms that can be worked out. I'd have thought they'd be much better at it. So I think this is an important report. I think it's worrying and I think we should look at it very closely. I mean, you mentioned the possibility of the Navy being hollowed out. I mean, an alternative reason for this, couldn't it be that money's just simply being spent in the wrong place? It's not a shortage of money, it's just that it's going in wrong areas. No, I mean, there's just insufficient money. Um, I mean, you can, always, you can always argue that, but you know, the government talked about extra money for defence, but in fact, the 2% of GDP uh, was smoke and mirrors, as the House of Commons Defence Committee said. It was done by putting in things like war pensions and civil service pensions. You don't kill the enemy with war pensions, so it wasn't an increase. Also, the exchange rate, the dollars, we're buying a lot of equipment from America now, the Apache, the P-8 maritime patrol aircraft, the F-35B, the, you know, the fast jets. All of this is coming from America, and the dollar-pound exchange rate makes it very, very expensive. Um, and, uh, you know, so the, these things are really squeezing the defence budget. I mean, there was a row about this in 2005 when you were still first sea lord, and at that time it was suggested that money was being diverted from the Navy and the Royal Air Force to the Army. Do you suspect that's still the case? I think during that period when we were fighting a, uh, a counter-terrorist battle in the middle of Asia, um, with, I'm not sure what the results really were, um, there's no doubt there was a shift of money from the maritime into the army. Um, that's, we're not fighting that war anymore now, and uh, the government have made clear that really we should be having a maritime strategy for our nation, which is, I believe, correct. If you okay. think we're the biggest European investor in the Far East, etc. All right, Lord West, we're going to leave it there, I'm afraid. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.